just to close my weary eyes and rest in you. Heart can rest so easy when there's blue skies. When the wind is gone and the rain is not inside. How I long to hang my sword above the mountain.
may look this way. We'll open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter number 3. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. I want to read a few verses if I could this morning. Starting in verse number 1. The Bible says, 1 Samuel chapter number 3, verse number 1. Thinking on really just this thought this morning. Really on your moment. About not missing your moment. The Bible says in verse number 1 of chapter 3, it says, And this child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And the air of the lamp of God went out into the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. Then the Lord called Samuel. And he said, here am I. Now look here for a moment. To understand the story, you've got to understand that Eli is in reality the man of God. The person that realistically should be sensitive to hearing the voice of God if anybody between the two it should be Eli that has that discernment before Samuel and the Bible says that they laid down and here Samuel was sleeping and in the middle of his sleep the Bible says in verse 4 the Lord had called Samuel and he said here am I then Samuel the Bible says and he ran unto Eli and he said here am I for thou callest, callest me and he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. Now, some of you know the story, but for those of you that don't need to understand it, Samuel was confused. He could hear something saying his name. He could hear somebody saying his name. There was something that was, maybe if you will, captivating his mind, his attention. But at the same time, he could not discern whether it was the Lord or whether it was Eli. So he got up in the middle of the night and he ran to Eli and he says, Here am I. He's trying to make himself available. But the problem was, as Eli said, it wasn't me who called you. Go back and lay down. So the Bible says after that that the Lord called yet again in verse number 6, Samuel. And Samuel rose and he went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. That's key. You ever wonder why sometimes some people can hear God and other can't? Maybe it's because some of us are just like Samuel. We don't know the Lord. Right. Amen. We want God to fix things. We need answer. Let's be honest. I need Things in my home, my life, my ministry, marriage. I, I need things day to day walking with God. And sometimes it is discouraging to be able to know that somebody else can hear from the Lord. But yet somebody else can't. How I can hear from God but somebody else can't. Or maybe why somebody else is not hearing what we're hearing. Maybe the issue is not that God is not speaking and not that God don't care. Maybe the issue is that some of us honestly just don't know the Lord. The Bible says in verse number 8, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down and it shall be. And if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at another times, Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. I want to tell you that this morning, that I'm not going to fool you or try to mislead you, but at the end of the service, I will, by the leadership of the Holy Ghost, ask you to respond to the Lord. Right. And I say it often, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart because I find it in my own life that there's no way that you and I can be presented with a truth and stand still. Either we will respond to the truth or we will not respond to the truth. Either you will walk away from God or you will choose to stay the same. And if you choose not to respond, you've already made your decision. 
And you can walk out of here being challenged. And you can walk out of here being educated. Or you can walk out of here being changed for God's honor and for His glory. Now, if you take back in this story, you take back about 3,000 years ago to a place that they called Shiloh at that time. That was a famous place. And there was a child, the Bible says in verse number 1, that he was ministering. So here he is. He's actually doing what he's supposed to do. And he's being faithful at the simple things. And then all of a sudden, listen to me, one moment. And that moment changed his life forever. One moment and it changed his life forever. When Samuel came to this place, here he was. He was doing what he was supposed to do. And it was not necessarily about anybody significant. It wasn't about Eli. It, it wasn't about, uh, about the people that was around him. It wasn't about anything else. It was about knowing that God was speaking to him. And listen, I want to say this to you this morning. It's not about you coming and not missing the service. Obviously, you here. You made it to church at 1030. Praise the Lord that you come. And it's not about you missing the preacher because you'll hear a lot of preacher. My question today or my statement today is not about you missing a service or missing a preacher. It's about you not missing your moments. Why? Because that moment can change your life forever. It's a moment that's only between you and God. It's a moment that cannot be explained. It's unnoticed. It will come when nobody else sees it. It's a moment when you'll find yourself to where it seems to be a divine appointment. And in my, opinion, in my opinion, it's an intersection that you and I have with God. It's a moment that will change you and it will not change everybody else. Either you will go with God or you'll go away from God. Either you will listen to God or you will not. And I know a lot of people say, well, not today. I'm still getting things better. I'm still working it all out. But meanwhile, you're worried about your family. You're worried about your spouse. You're worried about your finances. You're worried about your testimony. You're worried about everything else that goes on. And you think that there's no application to this. But the truth be told, it's because you and I sometimes turn God off. And we miss the moment when God is trying to speak. I'm here to tell you today, it does matter whether you are ready or not when that moment comes in your life. If you want to help with your home, your life, your marriage, with strength, with understanding, listen, church ain't going to fix you. Money ain't going to fix you. Your job and your title is not going to fix you. Neither is your education. The only thing that's going to help you, tuck you in at night, give you peace and rest that nobody else understands is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Christ and Christ alone. But if we are not sensitive to that moment that's in our life, all hell sometimes has got to break loose for us to realize Hey, somewhere down the path, I got off the beaten path. Somewhere down the road, I made a detour when I was supposed to listen to God. And I didn't. And we wake up in the middle of all this chaos, or maybe like the song was that was just sung, in the middle of a storm when it's darkness and it's silence and it seems like everything's wrong. When that devastation comes, then we realize, where's God? God's the same place He was when you left Him. Why? Because you miss your moment. Samuel was living a life. He wasn't told that this time was getting ready to come. He was not prepared for this time to come. But here this life that he lived was a life that mattered. Nobody knew that he would actually be one of the greatest and actually the first great prophet that everybody would know. Nobody knew that he'd be the one that would anoint Saul and David. What are you saying, Brother Jason? What I'm trying to tell you is God used this young man. God had a bright future for his life. And God has a bright future for all of us. Why? Because if you're walking with the Lord, everything's going to be all right. But see, what everybody don't realize, it was this moment right here that got him and prepared him and got him to the place that he needed to be, to be that one to anoint Saul and David. And so many of us miss the will of God because we miss our moment. Not only did that moment change Samuel, but it changed Israel. You want to know why it matters to me? It matters to me because my Israel is my people. It's my family, my church, my friends, my circle. See, this didn't just change Samuel's life. It changed everybody around him. Do you understand that this morning it's crucial not that you and I hear and know God in our moment simply because uh, we're following the Lord and we need the Lord, but there are people that look to us. There's a spouse that loves you. There's children that love you. There are friends that look to you. There are lost people in this world that need to see Jesus in your life. And if you and I are not sensitive to that moment when God speaks to us, how many people around us are going to lose out and miss out because of our negligence to our moment? Yet we come to church every single service 
And we act like this sermon ain't for us. Why not? Are you telling me that when God speaks, it's not for you? You get to pick and choose when God speaks to you? Y'all help me preach now. I'm telling you the truth. We'll think this sermon's for me or it's not for me. Or this, this Sunday school lesson is for me or not for me. I got, I got news for you, friend. Anytime God speaks, it's for all of us. It might not be the way that you like it. It might not be the way you like delivered. It might not be the package that it comes in. But if God speaks, it's for everybody. The question is, what are you and I doing with go, what God says to our life? And the Bible says that here he comes to this place and it changed them. It changed his life. It changed Israel. There's a few things I want to bring to your attention before I give you some principles. I just want to remind you this morning that somebody's praying for you. See, Samuel had a mom that was praying for him. A lot of people, they go through life and they think there's no way that I'm ever going to be able to make it. Or maybe sometimes they think that they could do it on their own. Listen, Samuel was not self-made. Somebody was praying for him. And I want you to know that this morning there's somebody who cares about you. There's a spouse that cares about you. There's a husband. There's a wife. There's a son. There's a daughter. There's a mom. There's a dad. There's a teacher. There's a preacher. There's somebody that is praying for you. And when you think sometimes that life don't make sense or maybe it's overwhelming, maybe it's just too big for you to be able to live that life, I want to remind you that somebody is praying for you. That matters to me. Not only that, but also somebody speaking to you. The Bible says that the Lord had called out and he said, Samuel, this story, in my opinion, is about God speaking to Samuel. And notice what he says when he speaks to Samuel. He says, Samuel. He don't say Jason. He don't say Sean. He don't say Jake. No, he says, Samuel. You want to know why? Because when God speaks, he might speak to everybody, but he speaks to you personally. Can I ask you something? What is he saying to you? Because every time a preacher preaches, and every time you open up the Word of God, and every time a teacher teaches, and every time something else done, when God speaks, He might speak corporately to a lot of people, but to every single person, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you directly. That fears me sometimes when I can go and I feel like everybody else got something, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. Maybe you're too spiritual to feel that way this morning. I've seen a lot of people go to church, been saved for a long time, and everybody else will get something, but they walk out with the same disgruntled mind and attitude and same bitterness and same hateful spirit about themselves and thinking God ain't never done nothing or why everybody else is celebrating about how good God is, but you can't. Well, maybe the reason is because God is speaking and you're the only one that's not listening. God's talking. The question is, are you listening to the voice of God? And he says, Samuel, it was a personal, he, he called out to him. And then he says, Samuel, Samuel, that means he's getting his attention. Right. I've learned in my journey, and you probably have too, I'd rather God speak to me to get my attention and allow something in my life to get my attention. Amen. A death of a loved one, a sad tragedy story, something to be able to happen, to be able to rock my world. Listen, I'd rather God just speak to me and me be so close to God that he can direct me with his words and not with all the things that could happen in my life. The problem was, in verse number 7, the Bible says that he did not know God. It wasn't the fact that he wasn't at the temple. Listen, he was in the temple. This morning, our issue is not the fact that we're not at church. You're at church. It's not the fact that he didn't know the preacher. He knew Eli. Eli was the preacher, but see... That wasn't what fixed him. It wasn't the temple and it wasn't the preacher. You could be at church and you could know the preacher. But unless you know God, and unless you hear his voice, nothing changes. Not one thing changes. So the problem was he did not know God. And then the third thing that I'll say with you is this, is that somebody's waiting for you. I say that for this reason. That there's somebody that's out there, somebody in your home, it's in this world that's lost, that's hurting, that's confused. Somebody that needs strength. Samuel had a, a great task ahead of him. God used him greatly. But because somebody was praying, he learned to listen to somebody talk. He was found faithful when somebody was waiting on him. And I want to ask you this question. Is God using you? And if he is, how is he using you? I want to give you three simple things this morning on how not to miss your moment. Number one, notice verse number nine, if you will. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be 
And if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Listen to this. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The first thing that I would say to you this morning about not to miss that moment is this, is that you need to get in your place. You need to get in your place. I'm not talking about a new place. I'm not talking about a new surrounding. I'm not talking about a new environment. I'm not talking about a new church. I'm not talking about quitting your ministry, and I'm not talking about quitting your marriage. You need to be in the place where God tells you to be. You need to be exactly where God tells you to be at all given times because if you're not in a place for God to speak, then you're never going to hear what God wants to speak when you're not in your place. You must be there to be able to hear His voice. And if you're not there, you're never going to hear the voice of God. I say it often, I still say it to this day, we're in tune with everything else. We can tell you about everything that's going on in life. We can tell you that everybody's doing. We know more about Facebook than what the Bible says about what God wants. We know more about everything else that's going on in everybody else's life because we're in tune with everything else, but we're not in tune with God. We can tell you about sports uh, statistics. We can tell you about activities that's going on. We can tell you about the next best sale that's going on at the mall. We can tell you about what somebody's got at KW every single day of the week because you know that we're in tune with everything, but not in tune with God. Amen. Why? Because we're not in our place. We're not in our place. You don't know one of the reasons why I come to church? Because the Lord has spoke to me many a time right here. Now, he spoke to me a lot of time outside of here. But there have been sometimes, friend, I'll be honest with you, I might have come in and I might have had a suit and a tie on, or I might have wandered in the door and, and came in here weak and empty because life had depleted me. But can I tell you something? On the inside, I might have been hollow. But it was this place, it was this location where the Lord spoke to me. Another brother or sister would stand up and testify about God's goodness. And God would speak to me. There would be a song that would be sung that God would remember like he never gave up. Or, or I'm on the winning side. And there would be something that was sung that would remind me about how God has been faithful for all these years. And the only reason I can make it from point A to point B was not because of my own strength. Not because I had it all figured out. But it's because I found where God wanted me to be and I was in his place. And you know as well as I do, you're in the same boat. And sometimes we get out of this thing and we try to do it all by ourselves. We get out of the place of God and we wonder why in the world we're so exhausted. We wonder why we can't fix our problems. We wonder why we can't keep on going. We wonder why we lose our joy. I'm a true believer of this, that as long as you're in the place that God wants you to be, God will give you the grace and give you the strength to be able to do it. If you don't believe it, you tell me why in the world he done it with David in the book of the Bible. God will give you the strength of everything that he calls you to do. And if you ever get outside of that, you will lose strength. So maybe the issue is not that God's not giving you strength. Maybe the issue is that you're not in the place that God wants you to be. Forgive me for being honest for a moment, but I wonder if that place is around some of the places we go. I, I wonder if that place, if God, if we can hear God's voice over some of the crowds that we run around with. We want to hear God, but we want to hear God when we lay me down to sleep. Or we want to hear God when you wake me up to go on the day. I mean, we want to hear God then. But what about day to day? What about life? What about the people you surround? And I'm not knocking your people. What I'm trying to tell you is this. is friends will come and go. They will stab you in the back and they will walk away. But God will never change. He's faithful. He's faithful. Always, always faithful. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Stay in the place of God. And it won't always be easy. But with God, it'll always be worth it. Number two, not only get in your place. Number two, ask the Lord to speak to you. This is simple this morning, I know. The Bible says in verse number 10, notice, And the Lord came and stood, and he called as at another times, and Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel answered, listen to this word, speak. He wasn't demanding the Lord, he was asking the Lord. He, he wanted God to be able to talk to him. He wanted the Lord to be able to tell him what it is that he wanted. That's, that's what his heart's desire was. He, he said, speak to me, Lord. And the amazing thing is, is you notice the Bible says, Samuel, Samuel. And then he says, speak, Lord. Here's why, because he ain't talking about getting your attention. He's talking about you actually yielding to him. 
See, we can come to church and God can get our attention. Something can happen outside the doors of the church and God can get our attention. But see, we're not talking about just God getting your attention. We're talking about you asking the Lord to speak to you. Sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night. Maybe you've been like this. I have a lot of things on my mind and my heart. God wakes me up. He gets my attention. Listen to me. Sometimes I have to sit there and be still and ask the Lord, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? I have to ask the Lord, God, what is it that you're trying to speak to me? He comes to this place where he says that he's willing to be able to listen for his life. He gets his attention, but he says, Lord, speak. Whatever it is that you want, God, I want to hear it. Amen. Sometimes I fear that's what our problem is. We really don't want to hear what God wants to say. We really don't want to hear what God wants to take. We really don't want to hear where God says to go. We don't want to hear what God says to change. We don't want to hear it. So instead we stay busy. We go to church. We go home. We go to work. Come back, do it again next week, and say we're doing God a favor. When I challenge you to take the weakest thing of your life and ask God, say, God, what is it that you think about this, or what do you want me to do about it? I would dare say that if we listen to God and God speak, God will tell us the truth. But the reason why we don't know is because we don't ask. God, what is it that you want for my children? Let's be honest, sometimes God's wants and my wants ain't always the same. <laughs> Amen, friend. Sometimes God tells you to go ask somebody to forgive you or say I'm sorry, and sometimes you don't want to go say I'm sorry. Can I get a witness right there? But see, we've got to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want? Why? Because if you miss your moment, you miss your moment. But if you don't miss your moment, God can use you to do things that nobody's ever seen. Amen. Not only be in your place, and not only come to the place to where you ask Him to speak, but lastly, and I'm done this morning, determine whatever God says. Hear me. Whatever God says, that you'll do it. I get one of you ladies at the piano, and I'll be done. Notice in verse number 10, he said, speak, notice these words, thy servant. In other words, Lord, it's whatever you want. I, I'm not interested in me. I'm here to serve you. God, whatever it is that you ask, I am your servant, Lord. You are in charge, whatever it is. Not only, God, do I want to be found faithful in the place that you want me to be, but, God, I want you to talk to me. I need your voice. And listen, I'm so thankful for men that's in my life that can call me and text me and encourage me. I'm thankful for a wife. I'm thankful for a pastor. I'm thankful for, for mentors that I have when they call and say, hey, I just want to give you a little advice. It means a lot to me. But there's sometimes that their words cannot fix me. They can't help me. They can't heal me. But I'm glad when I get in that place with God, when God can speak to me and can stir me up and encourage me to go another mile. Sometimes you want to throw in the towel, but God says, this ain't the place to throw in the towel. Sometimes God tells you to be able to go on and keep serving no matter what happens, but you got to make your mind up to listen to what God says. But the reason why he could obey is because he had the right heart. He said, Lord, it's not me in charge of me. It's you in charge of me. And God, whatever it is you want in my life, in my marriage, and my friends, my future, I'm here to do whatever you tell me to do. Wherever you tell me to go, whoever you tell me to speak to and encourage. Can I ask you, can I ask you this question? She begins to play. Who, what, or where is the last thing you ever done because that's what God said? You know Here's the good news. You ain't got to stand in front of this church and admit it this morning, but between you and God sitting in your seat right now, you want to see your spiritual temperature about how good this is for you and I? When, what, or who, or where? What was it? The last thing that God told you to do that you done it. 
You say, it's a simple sermon. I understand it ain't my sermon. It's God. It's what God wants to say. You know why Samuel was used? You know why God's hand was on his life? Because he was very simple and he wasn't so big-headed thinking he had it all figured out. Whatever God said, that's exactly what he would do. And he comes and he says, Lord, I'm your servant. You're in charge. I'm just here to be able to help you. Whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you need, God, I'll do it. You and I have seen it many times. There's a lot of people to go to church on a regular basis. They're always waiting for that big event. As if that big event is going to be the turnaround for their life. Now all that big events right now. Because every time God speaks is a big event. That, that, something, something crucial and devastating ain't got to happen in your life. No, when the Lord speaks, that ought to be enough for you to be able to do exactly what God tells you to do. I'll never forget, if I be honest for just a moment and testify, September 28, 2003 was the day that I accepted Christ. And I'm so thankful that that day, we were at Hainstown that morning, and that night, there was a preacher by the name of Tony Hudson that was preaching at Woodland Baptist Church. Preacher who was pastoring at the time decided to move our service from where we were to Woodland. We went over there that night, and that preacher got up, man, he got preaching. And of course, if you've ever heard him preach, now that was the first day I'd ever got saved. So, you know, I mean, I ain't been in church, and man, he was preaching on everything, and he still preaches on everything, right? I'll never forget that day I sent back. I, I know who I am and I know who I used to be. And let me say this. I might be saved, but I'm like Paul. In me dwelleth no good thing. There's still nothing good about me outside of Christ. Amen. But I remember that night we went to church and they gave an invitation. I remember I went down to that altar. GG and preacher come down and they prayed with me and they thought I was going to get saved. And I went down and I said, no, I... I'm not coming to get saved. I got saved this morning, but tonight I come down. And this was my prayer. Lord, as much as I've done for you in this world, God, if you'll use it, let me do it for you. God, I want you to use me. I mean, it was a simple prayer. I didn't know. I came down there. I don't know if you ever seen me like some of them young guys that come down to get on one knee. And they just kind of huddle up. I mean, you know, I, didn't, I was just kind of like taking a knee, if you will. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know all the right things. But I went, now I'm not saying that to brag on me. I'm saying that to pr pr prove a point. Listen. I fear there's a lot of people that wait too long to surrender. They wait too long to surrender. Man, I got up that day and, man, there's a lot of things and God began to do a lot of stuff in my life and you've seen it as well as I do. There's been many times, listen, I've been in church. The preacher be preaching or a preacher be preaching. Listen to me. A preacher be preaching. And I'd be sitting there and I know the Holy Ghost is talking to me. It's not the preacher. He don't know my life. It's not somebody else. They don't know my life. It's the priest, the Holy Ghost that was talking to me. And I'd get there. Sometimes I'd go to the altar. But unfortunately, there's been some times that I didn't go. Why? Because I said, oh, this is for somebody else. Let me ask you a question. What are you going to do when something happens to your spouse or your children? You're going to wait till then to start talking to God? Don't tell me that today ain't a day for you to start listening to the Lord. Today's a day for you to respond to the Lord and say, God... Thy servant heareth whatever it is that you say, God, I'm going to do it. Whatever it is that you want, God, I'll do it. Whoever it is that you want me to go talk to, Lord, I'll do it. Wherever it is you want me to go, God, I'll go. You know how we make it? Watch this. I've said it a thousand times. You ready? One step at a time. We're so consumed with six months down the road and a year down the road that we just stand still because we're trying to control what the outcome's going to be. You know what you got to do? You got to start today. What do you do? One step at a time. Just say, Lord, thy servant heareth. I want a better relationship with you, Lord. I don't want to miss my moment, Lord. Get up tomorrow and say, God, I'm listening. You ought not to walk out of here today thinking God don't have a plan for your life. God does. But when that moment comes, you listen, only you and God is the only two that will know it. You have to make your decision to hear the voice of God. You let God help you today. Father, I love you.